The Todd Shapiro Show, Canada Laughs, Sirius XM 168. It, it, to, to be this big of a country and to now completely legalize marijuana, and it went official today because of the royal, the queen apparently could have vetoed it, which I thought was funny. Um, we're here. Everything you've worked yeah. so hard your whole life for. How are, like, do you have to pinch yourself a little bit? Oh yeah, no. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 crazy to uh, to be witnessing this all happening after so many years of pushing for it and taking risks to uh, to bring this to the forefront. And uh, yeah, man, it's 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 incredible. It's incredible. You know, I used to have to worry about going to jail for what I do, uh, and now I. You know, I get to I get to work in the biggest cannabis company in the world uh, in full legality. It's uh, it's crazy. I could have been arrested for this only a few years ago. So yeah, it's uh, I feel very privileged. So do you know? With the, a question came up earlier when Ari Goldkind was here. Um, when it's legal, do you know what will happen to some of those old arrests to friends of yours that that went to jail or have it on the record and can't travel to America or things like that? Will will there be changes? So, so yeah, like uh, there's still talks about you know. Um, a blanket pardon for or like amnesty for people who have um, convictions for simple possession or even like low level trafficking, that kind of thing. But uh, that has not nothing of that nature has been made official. But there is but people can still apply for pardons uh, through the through the process that exists. There's just no sort of fast track method um, or process for people who've been busted already for cannabis now that it's being made legal. But there's a big movement for cannabis amnesty, and we support it uh, in a big way. It can't be growth, and we really hope that you know we can we can come up with a solution where we can just wipe people's records clean of these charges and offenses that never should have existed in the first place. JP, any questions for for Adam as we find out for sure today? Now that uh, October seventeenth, uh, you will be able to of certain age in different provinces just go and and you know buy marijuana. No, man, I'm just I'm just happy about the whole process of, of, of doing it. Because, I mean, I know so many people of, of so many walks of life that, you know, have had to, you know, kind of literally, as, as he said, kind of hide, you know, what they did. And, and at no point, even growing up, I never thought it was a bad thing. Uh, I never thought it was an illegal thing, even though it was. But um, I'm just I'm just happy for everybody who's, you know, down with the uh, with, with, with the cannabis. What well, Adam, maybe... What's really, what's really yeah. rad about it is that, like, Canada is now, like, a beacon for the rest of the world. Literally. Like, you I've know, had so whole... many... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I mean, go ahead. But the, the uh, we're a beacon for the rest of the world. You know, cannabis prohibition is crumbling across the globe. It's a big it's a big phenomenon. It's not just about, like, you know, letting people get high. It's like, this is a social justice movement that's spreading across the globe, and we're leading it. And I, what I was going to mention was, uh, as you meant, across the globe, I've had so many friends literally from across the world be like, congratulations, man. And I don't necessarily mean it. They didn't. They don't mean it in a frivolous, you guys get to smoke weed. They mean it in a, well done, man. Your country's and progressive. Liter- yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so proud Socially, of you guys. You know, uh, uh, ahead yeah. of the game. I'm just jealous uh, JP is friends across the world. I don't even have friends <laughs> in, in my own backyard. <laughs> Is that just a lucky, nice guy? Um, so what what might surprise people still, Adam, that maybe news stories don't pick up or, or don't cover as we learn about Bill, Bill C-45? And this Bill C-46, from what I understand, that talks about the penalties involved still within, uh, you know, there are still some penalties within marijuana and, and use and underage yeah. and, and growing. So what, what's maybe some stuff that people wouldn't know or, or isn't so sort of out there? Uh, well, you know, you'll be limited in how much you can buy and possess. There's like a general rule that uh, 30 grams is the most you'll be able to buy or carry around with you at any given time unless you have a medical authorization to allow you to possess more. And um, I mean, in some provinces, they want to ban home growing. So Manitoba and Quebec are looking to do that. Uh, and you'll have and just like smoking tobacco, you'll have to be aware of like what the particular laws are of the municipality or the province that you're that you're in and all of that um so you know it's not like uh it's not a free-for-all sort of legalization by any means there will still be restrictions but it'll no longer be a criminal offense to 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 buy and possess cannabis which is pretty rad what are what are some of the sort of the thoughts on you know consumption outside at, you know, at a restaurant and you know that people are just smoking in front of you what are, are the thoughts about what what will happen there is that allowed well, it's not allowed just 
yeah, but there is a lot of talk about the licensing of establishments where people can use cannabis just like at a bar, especially in provinces that are looking to, I mean, it's, it's especially important in places like Quebec. In Quebec, they want to ban smoking marijuana in all rental units, and they want to, um, you know, they want to really, and some places are even banning it outside. So people need a places to go to consume cannabis. Uh, and so, you know, looking at looking at licensing lounges and stuff, I mean, there's already tons of cannabis lounges operating in Toronto and Vancouver and places already, but just underground. And, um, and yeah, this is something that needs to happen just to as part of reintegrating cannabis back into society. That was actually my next question as far as like dispensaries and stuff like that, because I, I think they're kind of like frowned upon like now. Right. And and uh, certain places that I've been to, um, one that, you know, sometimes we do comedy in that I actually love. How 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 will those places be affected? Do they have to apply for a license or can they just kind of continue yeah, doing so what they do? Yes, yeah, so there's not really any dispensary in Canada that operates with uh, with like the blessing of the federal or provincial government. There's some places where the municipalities and the cities are are cool with them, and they give them business licenses, and they regulate them that way. But they're still federally illegal. So, uh, in the provinces where private retail will be allowed, these dispensaries will have to apply through that process to obtain the this license from from the distributor or the province to to operate. But some won't have that option in provinces like Ontario or Quebec, where they're implementing only a state monopoly and only government-controlled stores, and they're basically squashing the, the private sector for retail, which isn't a great move in, in our opinion. You know, we think there's room for government-run and privately-owned stores. Um, and that, you know, there's like a, there's a good deal of, of really awesome entrepreneurs currently operating in the dispensary space that should have a shot at at doing what they're doing in the future. So could people, or uh, Adam Greenblatt joins us here, John Paul. That's the radio stuff we got to do every now and then, right? Reset the dinner table, Todd. <laughs> you got to reset the dinner table. Um, it, it, can people still order online through through Tweed or stuff? It, it, or, or is that like only yeah. if you're medical? Yeah. yeah, it'll only be medical. The, 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 the licensed produce, producer direct-to-consumer uh, mail order channel will remain medical only going forward, and that that system will run in parallel for uh, five years. Same with like the medical home growing, uh, and in five years they plan on sort of reevaluating and reassessing where we're at with the whole with the whole thing with recreational medical and and uh, and seeing where we can make tweaks to to improve things and streamline things. But yeah, all of that will continue. But for as far as recreational supply. It's, it looks like it's mostly the provinces that are going to be monopolizing that, even in in places where you can have private stores. So, but uh, yeah, there will be a lot of weed in the mail. So is this is. like, uh, and and I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to be comical about it, but I, I guess it kind of sounds funny. So is 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 the government kind of almost like trying to lock lock the block down and squash out all the all the little guys, you know, trying to you know make a little hustle basically, on the side? Basically, some yes, yes. It's like some basically wire shit some, right now. <laughs> There's some wire fit, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> they're basically taking all the corners, <laughs> you know. That's crazy. Um, that, and that's in some provinces. In other provinces, they'll let you have their corners, but you got to buy from them. You See, know, that's some that's so some strong borrow, arm Barksdale shit from, right there, man. Yeah, yeah, for real. It's like it's like when Prop Joe. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> find <laughs> find some dispensaries like boarded up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's basically, uh, yeah, the New Day co-op. That's crazy. And lots of good wire references. Nice stuff. <laughs> but, but but all in all, Adam, I mean, this is this is a super positive news, and and I guess you know, I think people can can sort of look at it from afar right now and go, wow, you know, it's legal. And then as you get closer, you go, oh, okay, it's interesting how the government's done it, but yet they've still done it. I, I think most people understand that it had to be with a lot of restrictions. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, this had to be something that you, that Trudeau could sell to the detractors, and you know, uh, and they did this in a very cautious and calculated way, and it's why uh, you know, restrict access to youth features prominently in all of the messaging that we're hearing from the government, and you know, cause, because if we, this isn't something we have to sell to people who want to legalize weed; it's something we got to sell to the detractors, right? So it's it's perfectly you know, understandable and, and inevitable that we start sort of with a stricter system that we loosen up over time because that's a lot easier than starting with a loose, super loose system that we restrict over time. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're taking a, a quintessentially Canadian approach. 
So I'm asking for a friend, uh, knowing <laughs> that uh, it's going to be legal October 17th. What happens now if you get caught with, you know, uh, a joint or, or smoking you or can something? Still like, be, what happens? Yeah, you can still be charged if you go to the government of Canada's, like, Cannabis Facts. Uh, website. The first fact is that cannabis is still illegal. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, you know, I shouldn't laugh. It's actually terrible because they should have decriminalized it in the meantime. That's what but, I'm saying. Um, I'll tell so my yeah, friend only, <laughs> Yeah, only medical access will is legal until October 17th. Cool. Did we touch on, like, did you have anything else, Adam, that, that you thought you wanted to say that I didn't ask? No, I just I just love chatting with you guys about weed all the time. Does so. that make, so are edibles illegal too or just the smoking? Edibles are coming year two. So Asking the, for a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for your friend's uh, information, uh, edibles <laughs> will be legal in the second year of, of, le- of Canadian legalization as well as uh, uh, hash and resin and all the other derivatives. For now, we're just starting out with bud, oil, and, and like uh, capsules. And is uh, what's the what's – the, uh, uh, I always get it wrong. I always think of BBD, the group, but that, that oil. Um, oh, CBD. 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 Oh, CBD. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is that is is that as I like to refer to it, CBD? Yeah, you know me. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> CBD. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> That's, is that is that actually illegal, or does that fall under the same thing as as uh, cannabis yes, and all that kind of stuff? CBD falls under the Cannabis Act as well. Okay. Um, and so it'll be you know you got to you got to label it and and you got to measure its quantity and label it accurately on any CBD products. But what's interesting about CBD only products, the ones that don't contain any THC, is that there won't be a, a sin tax applied to them. Oh, so if, okay. or for, for medical use, they won't be charging like uh, the tax that they're applying to the recreational stuff. I know they so actually that's like, prescribe them to like, cancer. That, that, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty good win for, you know, yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a, it's a small compromise. I'd say, you know, it can't, can't like, uh, can't hit them for, I mean, it was a good, it was a good decision. It's a step in the right direction, but it's yeah, because other medicines step. aren't taxed. So why would that be? It, it, it's, it's a big step in the right direction. Yeah. The next, the next step is getting all the rest of the cannabinoids untaxed as well. <laughs> and, and, and fair enough. And, and do you think over time, this is stuff that will be pitched to the Senate and they'll still continue to make amendments? Is, is that sort of the goal? Or the hope? Uh, I think it'll it'll be up to now. It'll be up to regulators and legislators to suggest changes to the regulations. You know, Health Canada is being tasked with enforcing this whole regime. So, in the you know five years in, they're going to have a lot of recommendations because they're going to have learned a whole ton having regulated uh, all of these commercial suppliers. You'll have provinces that'll really like cut their teeth regulating their retailers and that kind of thing. Just as we've experienced in the medical marijuana program over the last five years, Health Canada's got to know a really a uh, whole lot about regulating marijuana producers, and they've used that knowledge to inform this recreational legalization process. So five years from now, we're going to know even more, and uh, and we'll be able to tweak the system for everybody's benefit. Yeah, JP's got a couple of kids, and and I have a little boy, as you know, Adam, and I'm I just I, I'm really happy for them one day when they're 18, 19, and of legal age, whatever province they're in, just to there was they'll grow up with no stigma. And yeah, to me, yeah, I think yeah. that's just that 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 that's. To me, that's the biggest win, and, and you know, makes me super proud as as a Canadian and uh, and a proud Canadian. I just wish they paid entertainers more. I got, I got uh, one, okay, last, one more question. One last question. Um, yeah. So, uh, how is it going to work for employers? Are, are employers going to be able to to drug test? Uh, their employees, or can they make it part of their their code of conduct? Actually, you know, like, I'll, I'll take it one step really further because we've talked about this before, sir, Adam. What will the CFL do as a league? Well, the CFL on one hand, they're looking into like I think they're looking into uh, all the football leagues, all the all the contact sports are are looking into loosening the restrictions on medical marijuana use. Like you know, there's tons of athletes in MMA and football and these high contact sports who are using CBD as an anti-inflammatory and who are using medical marijuana as an anti-inflammatory. But around drug testing for employers, the irony, the the real cruel irony that we may see in Canada is that legalization of marijuana may birth uh, a very pernicious drug testing industry, a pernicious and invasive drug testing industry. What does that word like mean? Seen, it means like kind of evil and bad. Okay. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't know it because uh, I'm, I'm neither. Well, think about this. Like if there's some places in the U.S. where you have to pee in a cup to join a chess club, right? Like drug testing has become so pervasive under drug prohibition in the U.S., that you know you, you really like 
you know, teachers are applying, you know, urine tests and stuff like that. You really, it, it starts young. The irony is that in Canada, we've really not had a, a, an invasive and pernicious drug testing industry, but that may be become uh, more prevalent with legalization, which is kind of an irony. That is so, very interesting yeah. stuff. Adam, I love this. You're going to, are, are you, what's the deal? You're, you're in Montreal now? I'm in Montreal, chilling. Is there a province that's celebrating this more than others? Like, what what province is is, is really rocking it? <laughs> Newfoundland. Um, yeah, man, Newfoundland is, is Newfoundland is, is going to be really crazy. You know, we're opening we're opening up four private retail stores in Newfoundland. They're really excited about all the tourism. By the way, uh, that's another great thing: tourism for the for the nation and job creation. Like, there's so much anyway. There's just it's it's just so wonderful. Canada's awesome. You know, I mean, there's going to be lineups out. I just can't wait for October 17th. I just cannot wait to see the lineups outside of all the weed stores. Oh, it's like getting shoes or time. concert tickets in the day. You know, like they'll be waiting for yeah. days to be the first consumer at this place and the first. You're right. That'll be that. That stuff will go super viral. We got to make sure we do some Balau on the streets for that. That'll <laughs> be, be fun. There's gonna be a ton of Americans yeah. coming in and scuffing their weed before they take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so tourists can come and just buy it the same way, like you would just go and buy alcohol well, or whatever. Well, I mean, they shouldn't, they don't even, Americans mostly don't need to bring it back with them. Yes, of course. Most of the states, I think I think almost all of the states that actually border Canada have decriminalized or medicalized marijuana anyways. Like, the United States is also on the cusp of its own cannabis policy reform. Hey, listen, man, I, I've been saying it for a while. I think Trump's going to just pull the wool over everyone's eyes and, and, and uh, do the same thing Trudeau did just to confuse all the liberals. But anyway, I think that's coming. He's, I mean, if if she can make any case for anything, it's a business case. Well, that and and taxes exactly, and 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 he will, yeah. and he absolutely will. Um, it's a pretty simple argument that I think even he could manage to articulate. Yeah, and wow. I have a feeling, uh, you know, that guy when he knew Snoop was probably no, no. <laughs> um, Mr. Greenblatt, congratulations to you and everyone who works so so t- so hard. I mean. The Todd Shapiro Show. Canada Lives. Sirius XM 168.